Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown of All's Fans. I'm your host, Bull, and in today's video, we're going to be covering my thoughts of Tennessee's second scrimmage of spring practice in 2024. It sounds like Coach Heupel is very impressed, and so are the insiders with this team from top to bottom. We had several players that sat out of this scrimmage, but I think that it's going to make us a whole lot better. And at the end, we'll be talking about some recruiting notes and nuggets, things like that. Several visitors will be coming up to Knoxville over the next couple of weeks. So we're going to be covering all that. Please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. All right, so it sounds like the defense won the day, at least for the first half of that scrimmage. And Coach Hybel talks about, look, if you want to have a good team, it starts with that defensive line. Now, I think that he answered it that way just because of the way that the question was asked to him. But I would argue that front seven on both sides of the ball is what will determine, especially in the SEC, how good your team is going to be. I think that we're really good on obviously the defensive end, but on the offensive end, whenever you're talking about our offensive line at the top, right? Everyone that we are projecting to be starters, they're all really, really good, but a lot of them sat out today. So the defense sounds like they won the day, and that is to be expected because you've got a bunch of veterans going up against a bunch of, you know, freshmen and underclassmen. So I think that the offensive line is getting a whole lot of work, and we'll kind of touch on that once we get to the offensive line, but let's start with the defensive line and just all the news and notes and things that I've heard, uh, you know, from the insiders and, you know, what I took away from Coach Heupel's post scrimmage press conference. Sounds like they were getting after it, going up against those younger guys. And the most interesting thing to me was from the insiders that we don't necessarily know who the starting group was, okay, especially on the interior, because that's something that Coach Heupel spoke about. He said, man, look, we are a veteran leg group up front on defense, especially on the interior. And I can just tell you all this. Whenever you're talking about having a good defense, the middle of that defense is what is the most important. And you can maybe even argue that for offense too, but I just think that it means a little bit more on defense starting off with those tackles, okay? And then moving on back to the second level with the linebackers, and then on the third level, those safeties. If you want to have a great defense, if you want to have a really good team, you need to be strong on all three levels in the middle on defense. So I would have to anticipate that the starters were probably Big O and Omar Norman a lot, but that's not necessarily, you know, concrete. It's not set in stone. I didn't hear that from anybody, but that's probably what it was. And the most interesting part of this is that in the second group, as far as the interior of that D-line, we had um, Elijah Simmons and David Hobbs. So you would think that maybe Bryson Easton would be right there next to Elijah Simmons. But for whatever reason, maybe it's just because we're rotating so many bodies in, in spring practice. And that's why, uh, you know, Bryson Easton kind of took that step back into the third group. But I think that that, again, just speaks to the depth of that front on defense. I mean, we've got so many different players and probably more than likely what it is is that the staff is just trying to, you know, see, okay, how can David Hobbs compete if he's next to an Elijah Simmons versus Bryson Eason? So I think that Bryson Eason uh, and David Hobbs are kind of fighting for that second group, but we don't know who is going to end up being, uh, you know, come kickoff. But again, man, you know, I just think that we're super deep in that third group more than likely was probably uh, you know, Bryson Eason, and I would say maybe Jackson Moy was in that group as well. Now, that's not something that's solid or concrete. I didn't hear that from anyone. It's just what I would expect based off of what I've been seeing so far throughout spring practice. Uh, and, you know, Coach Hypo was asked, hey, you know, did you intentionally work all of these guys in to try to build the depth from the times y'all got up on campus? And he said, yeah, you know, that's exactly what we did. We don't know how true that is. I mean, obviously, at every single position group, you want to build that depth. But I think that that was, you know, kind of like, a, man, I'm going to throw you a fat ball and you can knock this one out of the park just to make yourself and the staff look good. But I do think that there was some pieces in that that was intentional with this staff. And we're kind of starting to see it throughout every single uh, position group on this team. So let's go ahead and transition to offensive line because we had several players that sat out. We already know about Big Sprags at right guard. He's not going to be participating uh, in all of spring. But Cooper Mays sat out, Jackson Lampley sat out, and John Campbell sat out of our scrimmage last night. So a whole lot of young players got to go. We specifically heard about some freshmen that got their chance to go out there at the center position. Um, and Vice and Lang is not a freshman, but he was the starter. We heard about William Satterwhite. We also heard about Max Anderson working in at center. So we are definitely trying to build some depth and find somebody uh, you know, that can fit that second and third spot for the center position. If we weren't, then we would not be trying out so many players. Now we're hearing that uh, Cooper Mays had an ankle sprain. I hope that that's not true. I'm just hoping that maybe 
they had to make up some sort of a, a injury for him to sit out so that we could get some more depth uh, and some more reps for some of these younger players on that offensive line. But I didn't hear anything, uh, you know, in regards to what John Campbell's injury was and why he was sitting out of this practice. Now, I don't think that the coaches should have to make up some excuse because, look, veterans don't really need to go through a whole lot of spring practice. Obviously, you've got to get some reps in. But once we get to this point in it, I mean, let them sit out. And I think that it is, uh, you know, a great job by this staff in letting them sit out, telling them, hey, look, y'all just rest. We're going to keep y'all healthy because we don't have necessarily as much depth on the offensive line as we do on the defensive line. So whereas we're seeing all the guys are going on defense, uh, especially on that line, we're not seeing the same thing on offense. And I think that that just kind of speaks to, hey, look, there's a whole lot of competition. There's a whole lot of battles. We're still trying to figure things out. Uh, maybe at some starting positions, especially at left guard. And we think that maybe Sham, obviously Dane Davis has a great opportunity to be the starter there. Um, you know, I still really like Aiden Bustle and probably some other players are going to get rotated in right there. But outside of that, you've got to be able to build some depth, right? So we've got to figure out what we have. And what better way to do that than to have these young true freshmen and these sophomores and all these underclassmen going up against one of the best, probably the best defensive line in the entire country with guys that can come at you in waves. I think that that is brilliant by the staff. And we will see, okay, we will start to see a lot more players that can play and that are ready to play once their number is called. And again, I feel like we're going to be seeing that throughout every single position group on this team this season. It's just necessary. Something else uh, that's big is that, you know, these young players coming up out of high school and, you know, whoever transfer players, they're seeing it, man. Look, young guys are getting a chance to get in. They're getting a whole bunch of reps. We've heard that from a whole lot of the, uh, you know, high school players that have come up and visited us so far throughout spring. But I think that we did pretty solid there. Obviously, we didn't do great. It sounds like they were able to pick it up in the second half of scrimmage. If those young guys, especially those freshmen, are, are able to block these veterans, I mean, just imagine what they're going to be doing next season when we're really going to need them because, again, this offensive line is a veteran-led group. And most of these guys are going to be gone next year. So we are going to be leaning on the sophomores and the freshmen, all of the underclassmen uh, in that perspective, and just you know, to be able to step up and give us a whole lot for us to be able to continue the dominance that we know that we're going to have coming up in 2024. But also, can we carry it on to 2025? Again, it's all about that front seven play. Now on to the quarterbacks. It sounds like Nico necessarily didn't start great, okay? So Coach Hypo didn't specifically point out Nico and someone that didn't start off well, but he talked about the offense as a whole. So at the end of the day, we're going to be looking at the quarterback who is the leader of that group. If the offense isn't necessarily clicking, we're putting that on you. But I will just tell you all this because, again, we had so many young guys playing on that offensive line. It's tough to have a good offense if – nobody can necessarily block for you, okay? And I'm not saying that the offensive line didn't do a great job of blocking because I really don't know. But, I mean, just common sense tells you that they probably had a tough time trying to block all those dolls that we have up on that defensive front. But it does sound like Nico made some plays with his arms, with his legs. Sounds like he's been more of a vocal leader. Um, and, you know, it also sounds like Gaston Moore had a really good day. And Coach Heupel was very impressed with the progress that Jake Merklinger and uh, Coach Hype calls a Merk, uh, you know, he's talked about, man, look, he made a huge leap from scrimmage one to scrimmage two. And I've kind of seen that as well, just in looking at his progression throughout all of spring camp. I mean, you could tell that he first off came in and you could tell that he was focused. You could tell that he's been working on his craft, but it sounds like he's just continuing to get a whole lot better. So that is very impressive. And I think that we're going to be in great hands once Nico hangs it up, and, you know, I've seen several clips of Gaston Moore throwing some strikes, throwing some darts as well. Sounds like he's more of the game manager type. Okay, he's going to get what's given to him, but he may not be the necessarily, you know, playmaker type. Obviously, we know that he's not going to be Nico, but what you would hope, okay, is that with Nico gaining all this weight, getting stronger and all that, you know, all, all those things with the offensive line continuing to build more depth, that Nico is going to continue to stay upright and as, you know, thin as some people like to say that he is, I think he's fine, but probably somewhere around 220 pounds at six foot six. And he's really strong. You can just tell that he's a very wiry guy and he's going to be good being able to run that football and just being a dynamic playmaker. So I think that we're fine as far as the quarterback position goes. Now on to running back. This is a group that 
uh, Coach Heichel was asked, hey, man, you know, what are you going to do about that transfer portal? That's basically what the question was. And he said, well, you know, Bishop had a really good day. And he said that Keith had a good day as well. But Bishop sounds like he had the better day out of those two. I don't know if Dylan Sampson participated. And I wouldn't be mad at the staff by any means if he didn't because we're getting thin inside of that running back room. There's no need for him to show, you know, go out there and have to show us anything. We know what he can do, what he's capable of. Let him rest. You know what I'm saying? Like, let him just get the regular reps, you know, hopefully non-contact reps in practice and just keep himself in shape. But we don't need to see him in a scrimmage setting. Let's see what else we have, okay? So right now, we only have two, I think, scholarship running backs on this roster that are going to be participating heavily. And uh, it's good to hear that Deshaun Bishop and Khalifa Keith both had really good days. Coach Hyper said, man, listen, Bishop had his best day since, you know, last spring. And he got hurt, I want to say, maybe in summer camp. It might have been in spring practice last year. But he's a guy that we are expecting a lot from. I still think that at the end of the day, the coaches won't say this, but we've got to go to that portal. And they're not going to say it because you want for the running backs and every other position group to continue to fight so that they can get better. Like you want for them to feel like, hey, look, I've got a really good chance of, uh, you know, earning a starting spot or, you know, a spot in the rotation. And if you say, well, yeah, we're going to be going to the transfer portal, then those players are, you know, they may end up kind of just tapping out, you know, and they could also end up transferring as well. So we want to be able to retain as many players as we possibly can, especially in that running backs room. And for those of y'all that may have forgotten, we will have Peyton Lewis back for fall camp. So that's going to be big. I still think that he can add some depth, but you just can't necessarily rely on a bunch of, you know, underclassmen to lead this group because knock on wood, if Dylan Sampson goes down, we don't really have any veterans until the midpoint of this season. So, I mean, clearly we are going to have to go to that transfer portal and we will find somebody, but it's good to hear uh, that that group as a whole performed well. Now on to the wide receivers. And it sounds like the same guys that we've kind of heard as playmakers are continuing to make plays in live game situations. Coach talked about Dante Thornton. He actually mentioned Chris Brazel first. So we've got to continue to watch that battle. Now, from my understanding, they're not necessarily playing the same position, but I would think that with Brew being a starter, okay, we're going to be playing three wide receivers. Squirrel's going to be a starter. It feels like that third spot would be, you know, where both of these guys should be competing at. And I think just in looking at their, you know, body size, right, like their body type, very, very similar, okay? I think that Chris Brazel is a little bit shorter and he doesn't weigh as much as a guy like Dante Thornton, Dante Thornton was like, he's about six foot five, maybe 230 pounds at this point. We know that he was clocked at what, like 22 miles an hour or was it 24 miles an hour last season. So he can definitely run, he can move. And he's looked very confident throughout all of spring. This sounds like moving to the outside was a big thing for him just in his transition and getting used to this offense. And Chris Brazel, I mean, just being a playmaker, he's actually longer, even though I think, you know, he's shorter than Dante Thornton is. Seems like his arms are a little bit longer and he's got a very wide catch radius. Sounds like he's making some tough catches. You know, I, we saw that in his film coming from Tulane that he's going to make those, you know, one-on-one 50-50 ball catches. And uh, that's really what we were missing last season. Now, can Dante Thornton prove that he can be better than Chris Brazel in a, you know, live game scrimmage type of a situation? That's what I feel like is going to determine who will end up starting. But Again, I feel like in, at every single position group, we're going to be rotating a lot more than we have in the previous seasons. Number one, because we have more depth than we can do it, but also because I think it's necessary. And uh, we're going to move on to Mike Matthews before we get into Marcus Harris. So Mike Matthews sounds like he's continuing to make plays. He's been scoring touchdowns. That means a lot, obviously, if you're playing uh, you know, at the wide receiver position, if you are scoring touchdowns on a consistent basis every time that we come out here uh, and, you know, this is a live setting and you're scoring, yeah, you're going to get worked into that rotation. Now, this is something that Marcus Harris touched on in his visit yesterday, just on watching practice and things like that. And for those of y'all who don't know who Marcus Harris is, he's a four-star wide receiver from Matter Day High School out there in California. He's been a guy that I know GMAC really loves. They've been very close throughout this entire process. And he's been high up on Tennessee. But just in listening to, uh, I guess, the way that he was saying what he was saying, uh, you know, in his interview with VolQuest, I don't know if Tennessee came out and said, hey, listen, we are anticipating that we're going to be having more wide receivers than we thought early on. And it, you can still come here, but it's going to be a very heavy competition. 
Um, but it just didn't really seem like he necessarily was as high on Tennessee as he was whenever he visited before. So we're still in his top five, but I think that we're getting back to the point with Tennessee football that, man, look, top five is normal. If we're not top three, then we don't feel really good about our chances. That's where we're supposed to be. And hats off to this entire staff for getting us there. But Marcus Harris did talk about, hey, look, I'm seeing a whole lot of guys out there making plays, especially these underclassmen. He's saying, look, I love the fact that they're out there playing. And he can envision himself doing the same thing, whether it's in our offense or someone else's. And to me, whenever he said that, that was very telling. And the fact that it's prob probably not going to be Tennessee. But, I mean, that room, okay, is going to be very, very deep anyway, especially in this class. I think that we may end up getting four to five blue chip caliber wide receivers so uh, we don't necessarily need marcus harris would we love to have him of course but i don't want for y'all to get so down that just for me personally i don't feel like he's going to be coming to tennessee the experts have him pegged to go on to texas but that's huge and just you know these young players coming up and seeing that hey freshmen sophomores underclassmen are getting those reps is going to be big because that's what they want to do they want to come in and they want to play Obviously, it's going to be big for the transfer portal. If guys are getting those reps, if they're able to go out there and compete, especially as underclassmen, it's a much higher probability that they will want to stick around and continue to develop up under guys like Coach Pope, who I still think is the best wide receivers coach in this entire country. You know, I love the fact that he's gone out and put a big point of emphasis on being more physical. Okay, our wide receivers need to make those 50-50 catches, and we have got to, you know, stop trying to argue with the referees as far as is this holding, is this pass interference, make the catch anyway and let the ref throw the flag on top of it. That's what you want to do, especially for these players who have aspirations of going on to the NFL. You need to show that you are a dog, and it does not matter what the defense does to you. You're going to go out and make plays. So I love that mindset. And again, that's a very, very deep group. I know that Squirrel White uh, hasn't been as consistent as far as the clips that we've seen, but we do trust in him. He's another dog. Braylon Staley, you know, he's going to continue to do what he does. I want to hear more about, uh, you know, a guy like Nate Spillman. You know, how is he progressing? Can he be a guy that helps us out this season? Because we love this high school film, and I feel like he definitely can help us this year. And then Nathan Leacock comes back. Obviously, we've got Caleb Webb, who's been extremely consistent. Chaz Nimrod also all these guys, or you know, most of these guys, especially talking about on the outside, are like six three and up, and they can all move, and they're all tough, they're all dogs, and they're getting, you know, uh, you know, more fine tuned in that aspect of the game. I just think that all that coupled with, uh, you know, Nico and the offensive line being a veteran leg group, I mean, the offense is just going to be so explosive. Not to mention what the running back room is going to give us. Although we talked about that room is a little bit thin, I still feel like we've got some really good playmakers, especially with the way that we spread out, and the offensive line is going to. Uh, you know, create those lanes for those players to get some big plays. It's just going to be tough to stop this offense. Now, back to defense, let's talk about the linebackers. Coach Hypo didn't really speak about them too much, but we've heard a lot from the insiders that Keenan Pilly has been very, very impressive. Now, he's had some injury problems throughout his career, not just at Tennessee, but, you know, since he's been playing football, period. So we definitely think that he's going to be a starter for us. I would say that at this point, if he's been as impressive as people are saying, let's let him start to sit out, especially in the live reps, because it may seem like to an outsider, okay, that hasn't really played football, that you have to, uh, you know, if you come off of an injury, that you have to get those reps. And yeah, I would say that maybe some of the like drill work and things like that, but it's kind of like riding a bike. If you play football for this long, as long as Kenny Pilly has, you don't necessarily need to be going through all those live reps. It's just muscle memory. Once you get out there and you're thrown to the action, you're going to be fine. Now, give him some just to, you know, get that, you know, just to get his body ready because you go through like an initial stage of soreness once you start hitting where your whole body is sore and you've got to kind of get out of that. But outside of that, I mean, I would say let's just let him sit back and relax and be kind of more of a coach and um, just continue to grow from a mental perspective. We don't need him out there in live reps right now let's wait maybe until i would say like a week before or you know maybe like two weeks before the season actually starts you know until we really start to pick up that pace for him if we can let the offensive linemen and guys on offense sit out then we can definitely let Keenan pilly sit out this team is you know has a much higher ceiling with Keenan pilly being healthy and playing as opposed to him not so outside of that you know i love what i've been seeing from uh jeremiah t lander we talked a whole lot about him i think that arian carter looks good, you know, just as far as his body composition. He's lost a lot of that fat, and we talk about that freshman 15 on this channel. Once you get up on campus as a freshman, you're going to gain a whole bunch of weight. 
I think that Arian Carter might have hit like a freshman 25, okay? He gained a little bit too much weight. And it's good that he toned it back, right? It's good that he's able to kind of sit out um, and, you know, stay healthy and, you know, uh, you know, get himself back healthy anyway. But he looks really good running around. And we are anticipating once fall camp starts and he gets back to hitting, that he's going to pick up where he kind of, you know, left off, I would say, once he first got on campus. Because coming out of high school, we said, man, he's very special. Like, I even... Uh, you know, talked about him being very similar to like an Eric Berry, just as far as, uh, you know, like that buzz that you felt about him first coming up onto campus. He's going to be special, but we need for him to get back to the, uh, you know, athleticism that he once had coming out of high school uh, before he gained all that weight. But it looks like he's going to be fine. I could also talk about uh, guys like Jalen Smith, who has looked really good so far in every clip that I've seen. I haven't heard a whole lot from the insiders about him outside of, you know, I want to say one day, he was winning in some uh, blitzing drills versus the running backs and versus the tight ends. So that's always good to hear. He's got great size. He's another one. He's gained weight. He looked a little bit puffy last season, but this year he looks a lot more dry. You know what I'm saying? Like it looks like it's more muscle and a lot less bad weight. So if he can gain the weight, it looks like he's at, you know, about 230 pounds. If he can play with uh, the speed that he had in high school along with that weight, then yeah, he's going to be incredible. He's going to be very, very dynamic as a uh, linebacker in our system. So watch out for him. I think that Caleb Perry has looked really good. And Edwin Spillman, as a true freshman, we talk a whole lot about him. He looks great. You know, he came in physically ready to play ball. And we always talk about this, but the coaching staff has been having to, you know, dial him back some. So that's really what you want to see out of your linebacking core. Those guys have got to be the strongest warriors on your team. They've got to be borderline crazy, okay? Because you've got to go hit whatever is moving. And you've also got to be able to kind of like move around. I mean, like they're true warriors. So I love that group from top to bottom. And obviously guys like, uh, you know, Herring is going to be coming back. And, uh, you know, we still got Jordan Burns is going to be coming up uh, here over the summer. So on to the tight ends. Didn't hear anything from the coaching staff or from the insiders about the tight ends, but who's going to win the battle uh, between Holden Stays and Ethan Davis? That's going to be the biggest thing right there. You want to continue to find that consistency. Everything that I've seen from both of those players shows that consistency. And I think that they're really good at blocking. It's going to be big inside of our scheme. Miles Kitzelman sounds like he's been making a whole bunch of plays, not necessarily in this past scrimmage. I haven't heard nothing about him, uh, you know, in that perspective. But it does sound like he's been making plays, not just as a blocker, but also he's been catching touchdowns. So that was the one facet of his game that we said, well, you know, he can catch. He runs really good routes. But we just didn't feel like he was as dynamic of a route runner or, uh, you know, an athlete as uh, Ethan Davis and Holden stays. So it sounds like we've got three, three really good tight ends right there. And that's always good just because last year tight end was a position where we're like, OK, we've got two, uh, you know, maybe two and a half. Ethan Davis was a true freshman. But we say coming into this season, we may be kind of shorthanded, but the staff has done a phenomenal job of building up that depth right there. Now on to the secondary. Sounds like they were very, very impressive. And Coach Heupel talked about Will Brooks, okay, who played safety. I think that he started in that Iowa game. And, uh, you know, that's that's huge just to have a player that can, you know, play st star, that can play safety, and that can do it at that high level. He also talked about Andre Turrentine, and it sounds like he's been very, very consistent. So we asked who's going to start between him and John Slaughter at this point. I'm going to continue to say it's probably going to be Andre Turrentine. Now, for me, I may rather have John Slaughter just because, again, you know, I think that John Slaughter might be a little bit of a better athlete, and I think that he's going to be more of that hard-nosed, you know, like physical player. But if Turrentine is doing all those things as a veteran, he sounded very confident whenever we got to hear him speak. I'm fine with it. Like, I don't care who starts as long as we are winning. Uh, we know that Kobe Thomas has been doing a really good job as well. But we also heard from Coach Heifel about Jermon McCoy just continuing to be consistent and being a playmaker. He's going to be one of the best cornerbacks I feel like that we've had at Tennessee in a very long time. Um, so something to look out for right there. Obviously, Jordan Thomas being the guy that we're looking at to start at the star position. Can he stay healthy? That's going to be the biggest thing. But, I mean, you know, picked up so much size. He looks so good, so crisp going through all of his drills. And we can also talk about Jalen McMurray, who was our transfer defensive back from Temple. And there he played corner, he played nickel, and he played safety. I think that he can do the same thing inside of our system, but it sounds like he's a guy that, and this is not coming from yesterday's scrimmage, this is from uh, you know the previous couple of weeks, but it sounds like he's a guy that understands what the offense is trying to do to him. So obviously 
playing in that secondary, if you know what's coming, you can kind of bait the quarterback into some throws, and he could end up being a guy that can make a ton of, uh, you know, interceptions and picks and things like that. He's a really good athlete, so I think that once he gets that ball in his hands, he could take it to the house. That's really big to have on defense. Um, you know, obviously, Boo Carter has been very impressive. Again, we didn't really hear anything about him coming out of last night's scrimmage, but, I mean, he's a guy that, as far as a backup star player or even a backup safety player, he could be really, really big for us, and clearly he could play, you know, offense, defense, special teams. Just a dynamic athlete, period. Um, you know, we can also talk about Adris Farouk, who lately we've been hearing a lot of good things about. And we can also talk about a guy like Marcus Gorey Jr., who made the transition from playing safety. We thought maybe he could end up playing star for us, but he's playing corner, and he looks really good. He's actually one of our bigger cornerbacks. And in everything that I've seen, just personally speaking, he looks like he can come in and actually play. Now, obviously, Caleb Beasley being another one of those freshmen uh, that came in in the 2024 class, He's out, okay, I believe until fall ball, but he's a guy that, I mean, we're also expecting a lot from him. So, again, that's a really, really deep room, and we're hoping that we can retain all the players there. You know, obviously, I love Kobe Thomas maybe the most out of that entire secondary that we have so far. I would say that him and Jermaine McCoy are going to be really, really strong for us. And I didn't talk about Ricky Gibson, but, you know, him playing cornerback, uh, you know, also we could talk about Jordan Matthews. We could talk about, uh, you know, uh, Christian Conyer. Those guys, I mean, they all have a whole lot of upside. There's a whole lot of just length and overall athleticism. And that's something that Coach Hypo spoke about. He said, listen, we have got to get more athletic in our secondary. At least that was the thought coming out of last season. And they most definitely did that. So I think that just, you know, this team from top to bottom, uh, you know, just on a brief little cusp about, uh, you know, everything that we kind of heard from yesterday's practice and maybe a little bit throughout all of spring, we're going to be just fine. I mean, we've got everything that we need and we are continuing to get deeper. We are continuing to get better. And we want to rotate more players. And I believe that we will find a way to do that this season so that moving forward, these underclassmen can just become a whole lot better. Now, on to the final segment of the day, and that's going to be recruiting. Let me show you all this list right here, straight from VolQuest, about all of the players that we are anticipating will be up on campus this weekend. Obviously, several blue chip guys. I would say that the headliner for the players to come up this weekend is going to be David Sanders. Now, we didn't think that he would be back on campus until the orange and white game, but it sounds like now he's going to be coming up this weekend and next weekend, and it's going to be several other blue chip offensive linemen that will be coming up on campus with him. Will GMAC make the visit? I believe that he would, and I think that he should. Come on up and help us close out on these players because at this point, I would say especially for David Sanders, if he's visiting us, Back to back, it sounds like he's really trying to get things narrowed down. He might be getting tired of this process. It's extremely strenuous whenever your phone is ringing off the hook all the time from coaches around the country and from, you know, media members and stuff like that. So he might be done with this process, and I think that he wants to get it narrowed down. It's going to be down between us and Clemson, as far as I know. I think that we can win this one, but we're going to have to finish strong because I do kind of feel like Clemson has that edge for whatever reason. I'm not quite sure why you would want to go and play for a team that, you know, people keep on hyping up, but I just don't see them necessarily getting back to, uh, you know, the real, uh, you know, like championship caliber program that they were a few years ago. But that is going to be it for this video. And thank y'all so much for sticking all the way to the end. Please, as always, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share with your friends, family, and other volunteer fans. And we'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks. Peace.